there we go. Now, giant, they're eating it. What's going on, guys? I'm Jonathan Dietz, and today we are out here exploring the massive flats of Lake St. Clair, looking for fish just like this, only a little bit bigger. So we got some cool stuff going on that I'm gonna break down for you, but uh, hang with us and let's get after it. So like I said, we're out here on Lake St. Clair and it is a beast. This place is one big bowl. That's what everybody talks about. And what we're looking for today is isolated rock piles and rocky patches in amongst all the sand we have out here. And we found some isolated rock piles, the gravel. That's what those fish want to key in on right now. I'm using the 360 to make sure I can see everything around me and really break down the area. But then I use my Garmin Pan Optics to really dial in the fish. And that's how I can really dial in my cast and be as efficient as I possibly can on the water. So as you can see right here, we have some isolated rock piles and that's what we're throwing to. And what you really have to do is visualize what your bait is doing down there. So what's going through my mind when I make that cast is I'm putting this bait on the other side of that rock pile and dragging it through. And the key is to kind of get it semi-stuck. And what I mean by that is you want that bait to get in those rocks without actually having to lose the bait. And so we'll throw right up into there. You'll drag it through and you can feel that bait working through that rock. What's good about the technique that I'm doing today is it's kind of a power finesse technique in the fact that I don't have to bully these fish or uh, finesse these fish around with my light line. I can just hook them and get them out of that school as fast as possible if there's more than one fish there, which really makes me more efficient as an angler because I'm spending less time fighting the fish and spending more time you know, calling or fishing or finding new fish, which is exactly what we're all about. So like right here, we have a super tall rock. You can see it on the 360. It stands out over everything else around it, casts a big shadow. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my pan optics to be able to make the exact cast so I can watch my bait fall right down onto a group of fish. They'll probably come up before it even hits the bottom, just like that. Got him. <laughs> oh, he come off. <laughs> watch this, it's dropping right back down. You can see the bait going back down. Another fish. Got it, oh, he got off too. Gosh, they were all over that. Let's throw another one back down there because there's just so many. You can see them just suspended right there like that. There you got it. Got them that time. Just where he wanted to be, right on that rock. I, it looks so juicy. It's not a giant, but you can see how I can muscle them just away from everything out there because there's going to be more fish right in there. I can flip them right up in it. <laughs> Wait till you see how this fish ate that bait. This is how every one of them has been getting it. You can see that bait is just absolutely gone down that fish's throat. That should show you how lifelike this bait is that I'm throwing and, and how these fish don't get pressured as much out here on this isolated stuff. Oh, choked it. Right on the roof of the mouth, which is where you want him. Just like that. And you can tell that fish has been up here for a little bit by how dark he is. Just a nice color on that fish though. So what I'm throwing out here on these isolated rock piles and through this gravel is the new Z-Man Gobius. And what it is, it's a lifelike goby bait. And I chose this, uh, this green pumpkin color, this darker green pumpkin color, because it stands out a little bit and those fish can see it a lot better. And with the amount of pressure that these fish get and how many anglers are out there on the water, I wanted something that was super lifelike that these fish just can't tell the difference at all. And so that's why I throw it. What happens is on a lot of these rock piles, they get those fish get down in there and you can't see every single fish. And so a lot of guys will, will look, they won't see a fish and they just, they move on. And so that's why I like that 360 compared with that Panoptics because I can see the highest boulders and kind of get an idea as to where those fish would want to hide because we just can't see every fish. And that's why I like this Z-Man Gobius because it doesn't get stuck down in those rocks because it has that soft plastic body that's around it. And that rubbery body almost makes it kind of bounce off the rocks as you're fishing it. And so you get a lot more reaction strikes to it and you get more bang for your buck because you're not constantly having to drive up there to get it out or break it off. And so I can hop it through those rocks and really just get a better reaction strike by getting more fishing time while it's out there and uh, really just losing less baits and spending less money on it. Oh, there's an isolated boulder right there. That's a perfect example of what I'm talking about right there. There's an isolated boulder and there's a fish right on it. You can see that fish, two fish just sitting, two, three fish sitting just right on it right there on that isolated boulder. And so I just launched it out. You'll be able to see my bait falling if I can find it. There's my bait right there. See those fish coming right over to it as soon as it gets down there. There's one that's got it right there. Right there, he got it. A little, of course, 
it's always the littlest one in the group that gets it. But that's when you get multiple on them like that, and that was a boulder that I didn't even know was there. So looking at my 360, I could see that isolated boulder right off to the side. And then using that pan optics, I could see that there was three fish sitting right on it. And that little guy, oh, I thought he was gonna jump right back in the water for us. They get that Great Lakes blue on them, like I call it. But yeah, wouldn't even even known that fish was there. So when people think about goby baits, they think it only relates to where gobies are, and that's not true at all. Uh, most of you guys don't know my background is in fishery science, so I spent a lot of my time studying all the different fish. What people don't understand is there's sculpins and there's darters, and there's so many different species that look like a goby, and so this just doesn't imitate a goby. It also does a great job of imitating natural sculpins and darters, which are in every single body of water that you could think of. That's the kind we're looking for there. I'm gonna go right over top of your head again. Do a nice little circle with them. Probably could boat flip them, but I really don't want to. Uh, even right over here, grab right all of them. That is a long fish. That is a long fish right there. Again, got that hook right in the roof of the mouth. You can see when it comes out, that hard plate right here, that mandible, they're pretty well pegged at that point. It's nice and locked right in there. And so one thing that's great about this is, is the durability of that Elastec that we have going on there. Gets that supple action, which everybody loves. But when you're throwing a lot of these, these jig head in baits, a lot of times people are worried because you buy one and you might only catch two fish on it. But with that Elastec, it allows it to last so much longer. Oh, got something. So we just caught a goby and looking at the similarities we have between this, it's absolutely uncanny. They even got the dot on the fin on the same spot. And so when this is down there, his fins are gonna be all standing out. He even has these fins on the backside. You can see how big these fins are on the top and the bottom that have exactly what we have going on here. And you have the round. So they wanted to incorporate the same paddle tail to get the motion out of it. But if you look, they have a round flat tail like most everything else. So they incorporated that into the design as well. And so you get the exact profile that a goby's gonna have from everything to the eyes, how they sit farther off the head, to the head size, to the body size. It's absolutely uncanny how similar these ones look. So with this gobius, I like to do a couple different retrieves. And the way it works is because it's a swim bait also, it's not just a bottom bait. You can also reel it through some grass or reel it right above. If I was trying to cover water, I could reel it a little bit. And so I do the swimming technique a little bit, but then the majority of my technique when I'm doing what we're doing here is I do a lot of the side sweep, almost like you were fishing a Carolina rig. And so what that's for is when the rock is a little bit shorter, I'll do the drag. But when that rock is a little bit taller, I'll kind of lift my rod tip up and work the bait up because that way, with that 90 degree line tie, you're guiding that bait over. And that's how you keep it from getting stuck. You guide it over with the rod and then let it fall back down. And it looks like a goby or any kind of bait fish that's going over the rock and coming back down. I also, when I get in that good rock, a lot of times these fish are sight feeders, these smallmouth on St. Clair. And so what I'll do is I'll pop it a little bit, especially when it first gets down there, because you have to think that as that bait was falling, if a fish didn't eat it, he might be sitting there just looking at it. And if he's sitting there looking at it, generally he's right over top of it. And so by doing that pop, it's almost like you put it right in his face and he's almost either got to eat it or get out of the way. And 90% of the time, man, it seems like they just eat it. And so that's why I do that popping technique. All right, guys, now that we're in a little backwater, we can sit down and kind of talk about this bait a little bit more and I can kind of give you a little bit more in-depth look at it. And so there's a couple key features that I really, really like about this bait. The first one is going to be that Elaztec plastic. So you don't have to worry about anything ripping off the tail, whether you're fishing around perch or bluegills or rock bass, like we always do. And so they hold up really, really well. Another key feature is the weight distribution system that they made in here. Instead of it being all concentrated on the head, it is distributed through the body. You can see that weight goes back through there. Like this is a three quarter ounce, but because they made that weight longer, it gives it a glide to it instead of a straight fall, which is what we see with most baits. This bait actually glides through the water. And I don't know if you guys have spent a lot of time underwater like me looking at gobies, but uh, when gobies pick up off the bottom, 
they just kick up and they glide. They don't actually like swim a whole lot, and so that glide action is really, really key. I used to spend a lot of time when I was younger in creeks up on Lake Erie uh, and in the lake itself just looking at gobies and understanding how they swim and understanding the anatomy of them. And so that was, that was really, really critical into the fall rate of this. And so that was one really, really key feature. And then you have the feature of this fin, which acts as a natural weed guard with that hollow body underneath that really separates that hook and allows you to get some great hook penetration when you set the hook. That's what that soft elastic will do is just move right out of the way, puts that hook right in the roof of that fish's mouth. So there's three primary colors that I like to throw when I'm imitating gobies like we are today. If you live on another fishery that has a lot of sculpins and darters, I like to go with a green pumpkin goby or just a green pumpkin purple. But even with gobies, those are two great options. It stands out, it really gives those small mouths specifically, uh, just something they can visually see. And then we have this other color, it's very similar to Drew's Craw, but uh, it's a natural goby color that when you have super clear water, it's just something that looks exactly like a goby like we talked about earlier and I showed you the comparison. But uh, those are the three colors that I really like to throw when I'm around gobies. With this bait, what we decided to do was the way it was designed with that bigger hook, it has a stiffer and sharper hook point on it. And so I throw it on a bait casting setup, which allows me to be a little bit more efficient. And like we talked about earlier, being able to muscle those fish out of groups of fish to where you can get back in there even quicker. So the setup that I'm throwing here, this is an Arc Invoker Limited Series. This is a 7.2 medium heavy. I pair that with P-Line Tactical Fluorocarbon in a 10 to 12 pound. You could even go eight if you were on really, really clear water and you wanted a faster fall rate. And then I pair that with an Arc Series Reel. This is a bait caster with an eight one to one setup. So what that allows me to do is that allows me to make casts really quick and when I'm scoping around, if I see one, I can burn that line in and when I'm dragging, it allows me to pick up that slack super, super fast. And so we all know smallmouth like to make crazy runs. They do a lot of goofy things. And so that faster gear ratio allows me to keep up with them and keep them pinned all the way back to the boat. No, that's a good one. Well, not giant, but there was like five of them down there. Ooh. There we go, another decent one, not a giant one. On that little gobies popped right out of his face when I was grabbing him. We got it on spot lock, we are on spot lock right there. There was a school of them, there was five or six of them right there that I threw into and when you can get more than one on a screen, typically you're gonna get bit as soon as you get down there because that competition factor gets into there and when they see something like the goby, they're gonna eat it. So, another nice fish. So the next time you find yourself on a big body of water with a lot of less features in it, don't be afraid to put some idle time behind the graphs and find those differences like we talked about today with those rock piles. And then uh, don't be afraid to pick up that Z-Man goby you see there to get a really lifelike presentation to lose less baits and, and cover water more efficiently. But thank you guys so much for watching and. See you guys next time.